What do we got? What do we, ooh, baby. Rainbow cookie waiting for me. Huh. That was weird. Anywho, just what the doctor or, oh, man. What the hell was that? Oh, man. We keep giving them opportunities, but some people just never learn. Let's release some more inflammatory metabolites and constrict those blood vessels. You got it, boss. I mean, someone's got to put some pressure on them to make some healthy choices. And you know it ain't going to be brain. Puff the magic drag. Ooh, look, a cookie. Oh, they don't pay me enough for this. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to a, another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we are mixing two of my favorite topics and covering some new research highlighting how they may be used together to combat the sixth leading cause of death that we humans face, chronically elevated levels of blood pressure otherwise known as hypertension. Now, before you brush that off like it's no big deal, let me tell you why you want your blood vessels relaxed and free flowing. This happens to be a condition that nearly half of the adults in the United States or 108 million people are dealing with today. And if not dealt with properly, it could lead to some pretty real complications like heart attack and stroke, aneurysms, heart failure, weakened and narrowed blood vessels, metabolic syndrome, cognitive impairment, and even dementia, which we just dropped a full video on how to prevent against. And yeah, I know, that's a pretty nice list of longevity liabilities right there. And it reminds me, production team, stop stressing me out. No more. Musa. So on the docket today, we cover how a intermittent fasting protocol can potentially improve high blood pressure and how it does this in a not so obvious way by altering the gut. And if we want to get specific, the 50 plus trillion microorganisms that call our intestines home that are inside us at this very moment, living their best microbe life. Talk about living in close quarters. And to think you used to complain about sharing a bathroom with your siblings. So before we dive into the research, let's talk about the immense power that these little critters wield and how fasting may be a potent hype man or hype woman when it comes to kickstarting the longevity party. Your microbes and you. If you are here right now watching this, I take it that you are somewhat interested in longevity or putting yourself in the very best position to live a long, prosperous, healthy life to the very, very end. Which, in my opinion, is a pretty good thing to be interested in. Good job. Pat yourself on the back. No, not you, production team. And if you want to be successful on this quest, your gut and all those microbes cannot be ignored the integrity of your gut wall and the communities of microbes that lease real estate throughout your bowels have a direct impact on not only your day-to-day -day feel, mood, cognition, cellular and metabolic function, but also your ability to prevent disease over time, AKA your longevity, delaying disease onset and doing everything that you wish, hope, desire, things that truly fulfill you with zero limitations until the very, very end. Your gut wall is the barrier from the external world to your internal world. And the hottest club in town, Circulation. Yes, man! That would be a pretty dope club name, all seriousness. Trademark right here. You guys don't, no, trademark. You should, production team heard it. Start working on it, come on. What do I pay you guys for? Think of your intestines as the body's main transit hub, like a train station or airport. It's jam packed with security, your immune system, nutrients and organisms from the external world being inspected for absorption, and trillions of travelers or microorganisms, some living there permanently and some just passing through. This complex ecosystem that lives within us has a name and it's called 
our microbiome. And modern science has indicated that what happens down there influences what happens up here. How you feel, how you think, how you look, what you crave, how you dance. Okay, that, that last one wasn't scientifically proven, but I mean, it's gotta be true. And you thought it was all genes production team. Here's the deal. The bacterial communities that make up our unique microbiome are ever changing, constantly adapting and being influenced by a plethora of different variables from food to environment, movement, sleep, medications, and wouldn't you know it, when we eat. The key here is providing the right inputs because when we do a symbiotic relationship is formed. When we nurture our microbes, they return the favor, releasing beneficial metabolites that benefit us, the host, strengthening the gut wall and protecting against nefarious behaviors. People helping microbes helping people. You heard it here first. Production team, trademark that one too. But when we do the opposite, a state of dysbiosis or imbalance ensues, coming with, well, typically a whole slew of less than optimal side effects from digestive issues, autoimmune conditions, chronic inflammation, and even brain fog. When less than optimal populations of microbes prosper, they also secrete inflammatory molecules that begin a slow and steady siege on our oh, 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 so precious gut wall, paving the way for harmful molecules, pathogens, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites to potentially infiltrate our body, causing immune chaos and a laundry list of negative downstream effects. Thus, the gut is kind of important. So important that we have a number of videos that break down how to improve its function, all of which will be linked in the description below. But for now, we move to what fasting's got to do with all this. Fasting's longevity powers. If you've been around this channel, you know that I call strategic fasting as one of the best longevity tools we have in the toolbox. And for good reason, it has shown to move the health needle in positive directions for many of the metabolic diseases and syndromes that plague our Western society, and has shown to be potentially one of the best prevention tools we have. It has been so interesting that I have a full fasting playlist with 40 plus videos highlighting its cellular and metabolic magical powers. But as it pertains to how it affects our gut microbes, here's what we know. Previous research, mostly in animal models, suggests that intermittent fasting can modulate positive changes in the gut microbiota in a few different ways. By stimulating adipose tissue browning, reducing insulin resistance, providing cardiovascular benefits, and even preventing central nervous system inflammation. However, the clinical studies evaluating the long-term effects of intermittent fasting on cardiovascular health are limited. But overall, intermittent fasting seems to be beneficial for cardiovascular health by doing things like reducing body weight, lowering LDL cholesterol, blood pressure, and risk of coronary artery disease. And we can't forget how it's been shown to stimulate dormant stem cells in the gut wall, rebuilding and regenerating it. And we actually have a full video on that. So this new research aims to tease out how intermittent fasting, in this case, every other day eating or alternate day fasting, can improve high blood pressure conditions in rats. And more interestingly, how it works its magic. Now, before we dive in, I must remind you, this is a study in rats. And rats are in fact not humans. Although, some humans are rats. I, I, I stole that joke. The study. Researchers from Baylor College of Medicine conducted a nicely structured study seeking to answer a few main questions. First, can an intermittent fasting protocol manipulate the gut microbiota to regulate blood pressure? And if so, is the change in blood pressure directly due to the change in the microbiota? Or is it working by some other mechanism? First, let's run through the methods. Researchers took two groups of rats and either put them on an alternate day fasting or every other day eating protocol or allowed them to eat normally at libidum. The first group was a species of genetically prone hypertensive rats, meaning they naturally have high blood pressure. While the second group was just normal, fun-loving rodents with no genetic risk for high blood pressure or metabolic disease. So. During this 10-week protocol, half of the hypertensive rats and half of the normal rats 
ate every other debt, while the other halves acted as the controls and went along eating like they normally would, ad libitum, as they freely wished. So what happened? Let's start with question number one. Did a ADF or eating every other day fasting protocol manipulate the microbiota to regulate blood pressure? Well, at the nine week point in the experiment, researchers observed a couple of things. First, the genetically prone hypertensive rats in the ad libitum control group had higher blood pressure than the normal rats in the ad libitum control group. No surprise there. But interestingly, in the group that fasted every other day, the same genetically prone hypertensive rats had significantly lower blood pressure when compared to the hypertensive rats in the control that didn't fast. Hmm, they, they may be onto something here, production team, but how, how do we know for sure? Let's venture to question number two. Was the microbiota involved in the reduction of blood pressure in these genetically prone fasted rats? This is where researchers got creative and did something that we would never be able to do in human research they transferred the microbiota of both the normal and hypertensive rats in both the fasted and ad libitum group into germ-free rats, which were bred with no microbiota at all. And here's what happened. The germ-free rats that received the microbiota from the ad libitum fed hypertensive rats had higher blood pressure than the germ-free rats that received their microbiota from the normal ad libitum controls. No surprises there. However, the germ-free rats that received their microbiota from the fasted hypertensive prone rats had significantly lower blood pressure than the germ-free rats that received their microbiota from the hypertensive control ad libitum rats. This is rather interesting. And if you're wondering what may be happening, researchers were too. So they performed a whole genome sequence of the microbiota of all four groups of rats. Finding that bile acid metabolism may be a potent mediator. Observing that hypertensive prone rats that were fed ad libitum had lower bile acid in circulation when compared to the genetically normal controls. But the hypertensive prone animals that followed a fasting protocol had more optimal levels of bile acid in circulation. They also noted that both fasting groups had a decrease in a number of inflammatory markers, such as IL-6 in the kidneys and CCL2 in the brain, suggesting a potential protective effect of intermittent fasting if continued into older age. So what do we get from all this data? This current study demonstrates that every other day or alternate day intermittent fasting lowers systolic blood pressure in hypertensive prone animals by causing a beneficial manipulation of their gut microbiota and modulating its gut derived metabolites. Overall discovering that gut dysbiosis is not only a consequence of hypertension, but it's actually involved in causing it as well. And this just adds another notch to the already impressive longevity boosting powers of intermittent fasting. Now keep in mind, not only was this an animal model, but it was also leveraging a more extreme form of intermittent fasting. One I wouldn't consider ideal or sustainable for the broader population. So as always discuss any potential intervention or fasting protocol with your doctor before you step into it. We also have to state the obvious that Fasting in rats does not correlate one for one with fasting in humans. And we don't know if the more sustainable time restricted feeding, which is the breakdown feeding fasting window in a 24 hour period, have the same effects here. But odds are strategic daily fasting mixed with a slow and sustainable creation of healthy lifestyle habits focused around the foundations of health, prioritizing sleep, eating real food and moving that badonka donk, all of which have distinct playlists on this channel, will get your body moving in the right direction, marching towards improving cellular and metabolic health, getting healthy from the inside out, and getting the most out of these pretty cool meat suits we've all been gifted. And that's why I remind you at the end of each video that there is no, 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 no better day to start or continue investing in your most valuable asset. You. That's what we got. As always, let me know what comments, questions, any random thoughts you have down below. And for a lot of these things, doesn't cost a dime. Only time. No, no production team. It, put your wallets away. It, it was a saying. Oh man, you guys stress me out. Wait, what?